Hi everyone, today we are gonna talk about heat weighted pads. Why would you want a heat weighted pad? There are numerous reasons. Number one, some people get um, short limbs or shoulders. And so this is really nice to put, this is the one I made for my husband. You can put it on your shoulder and you can see it's not too big, but it's just a nice size. Fold it in half, put it over your shoulder and it heats up your shoulder and takes that pain and that ache away. Maybe you need it for another part of your body. I know my little boys really like it on their feet at night instead of a water bottle because it holds the heat a lot longer. Another reason why people like this, as in my son, he really likes the weight on his um, body. And so I won't even heat this up. I'll just literally take this as a weighted blanket or a weighted pad, I guess. It's not really a full size blanket. And I'll just put it on his lap and it kind of acts as a calming mechanism for him. Um, and he likes it even for bedtime. Sometimes it's better for him for sleeping. He likes to have it on him and he seems to settle a little bit faster. So today we're going to make one of these and I've been making them all season long. We have cold winters up here. And so I think we're on our third false spring <laughs> and I think there's about four of them. So I'm hoping this is the second last one and then we get right into spring. Um, but what I really like about this is that it's flexible. It forms really nicely on your body and it's easy and light. Now I heat these up in the microwave. I do them, um, 15 second, second increments. Um, sometimes if I have a bit bigger, I know my, uh, my son has a bit bigger of a pad. I made it a little bit bigger for him and I actually put his on for 30 second intervals so sometimes i'll so i'll put it in 30 seconds and then i'll feel it to make sure it's not too hot and what i'll do is i'll rotate it around in the microwave turn it back on for another 30 seconds again open it up feel how warm it is if it's burning you don't want this to burn so that's why it's important to be checking it every 15 seconds to 30 seconds in the microwave um on high i i have a really, really big one for my one son. And he, he actually, we have it heating for four minutes, rotating it every 30 seconds. And his is a really, it's more like a blanket, but it just kind of covers his legs. So you can make these any size, um, experiment in the microwave and make sure that you're watching it so that it doesn't heat up and catch on fire. Cause eventually these could catch on fire if you left them in long enough. The other thing is, is I found sometimes it can get really, really hot to the touch. So you really need to make sure that you're not just putting that straight on skin. Test it, check it out, make sure it's not too hot. Um, even leave it out if it is a bit too hot and you've left it in too long. Um, but just please be very careful with how you're heating these. Again, you can just use these without any heat. Um, I actually uh, have made some in bags. So this would be the liner kind of thing. And then I take this and have a, um, like a pillowcase over top of it. And this would kind of be like the middle, the inside of the duvet, if you will. And that works really nice too, because the stuff that's inside of here and this particular one is not washable. You can spot wash this, no problem, but I wouldn't, and I would leave it out to dry, but I would not recommend putting this in the washing machine. You can get inside um, beans. They're like little glass beads that can go inside of these. You can also get plastic ones that can go inside of these and both of those can go into the washing machine. So just look out at Michael's or your local stores and see if you can find some. I know they have them online as well. Um, and those can be um, washable and they're very easy to clean. But this is just, like I said, a simple mat, a simple weight uh, pad to go onto your lap and even to warm a shoulder or warm a back or warm your feet. <laughs> and so I filled mine today with flax, rice, and a little bit of lavender. So let's get started. Okay, let's talk about the stuff that I fill my bags with. So I just use regular white uh, jasmine rice. I feel like jasmine has a little bit of a nicer smell to it. This is more filler than anything. That's really what I use. And I use about one cup of jasmine rice 
to about either a half a cup or one third of a cup um, of the flaxseed. Now you can fill this with anything. You can fill it with lava sand. They say lava sand's the best. Um, but sand in cotton, quilt cotton, which is what I'm using, quilting cotton, um, I find it really doesn't uh, stay in the bag quite well. So you'd have to line it, which I don't know if I want to do and get into that. So I found that this worked really well. It doesn't leak out. Um, you can put walnut shells as well, crushed walnut set, uh, shells, crush them into the sand. I'm just going to pour this right in. There we go. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it on the side of my bin here to see that I have kind of a third based on this, how much I have in the bottom of this already. And that looks pretty close to a third. Now what I'm going to do, and this is just an old ice cream tub that I'm using. I've even, I even have one that's made out of beans that somebody made for me. Um, dehydrated rice, or sorry, corn, dehydrated corn you can use. Okay, so I am just mixing this together and making sure it's all mixed in. Now, I also add a tiny little bit of lavender. This lavender I actually got from my sister-in-law. She went to a lavender farm and they had these little packets that they were selling of lavender. She could fill socks or things in your, um, in your, you know, your uh, sock drawer with and um, use it for all the different uses. There's probably a ton of different uses, but I've been using it for this. You can also use lavender tea and that works just fine as well. So again, I'm just going to eyeball this. I want about a tablespoon for every one to three cups of, that's about a tablespoon, maybe just a little bit more, um, for every one to three ratio of rice to flax. And you don't want to overwhelm. I mean, if you, you can smell it. If you smell down here right now, you can smell... Um, if this is too strong or not strong enough, if you want to add a little more, you're welcome to do that. But I think it's really important that you don't put too much in because if you put too much in, what happens is then your bag is just unusable because it really gives you headaches from the smell of the lavender and you don't want to be overpowering whoever you're giving this to or for yourself with the smell of lavender because when it heats up, it can get really strong. So just be mindful that less is more and that's really what you want to do. Next, you're going to want to have a piece of material that's quilting cotton. You don't want anything thinner than that because the rice and the flax could actually puncture through the side. So you want a really nice thick cotton. You probably don't want polyester because I assume polyester in the microwave wouldn't do well since it is a form of plastic inside of it. Um, so just a quilting cotton is all you need. Um, you can experiment with other different types of um, fleece or anything like that. Uh, flannel might also, if you have 100% cotton flannel that also might be nice because it would be soft but this is for my sister-in-law who also has a sore shoulder and we're going to make this for her so um, my fabric is about 11 inches by the full width of a bolt which is about 42 and a half I cut the selvage off so 42 and a half so I like to make my squares where I'm going to fill. If you can see on the one that I have here, I like to make my squares about five inches by five inches. Now this one's a little bit awkward because I don't think I cut it well, but five by five is typically what I like to make. And so what I do is I look at my fabric and I think how many squares do I want wide? And this one's going to be two squares wide by I think four, I'm assuming. And so um, I'm going to actually draw a line um, five inches and a half in for my seam, seam allowance. So I'm making a half an inch seam allowance so that I can do um, a little bit more of a, of a seam to keep everything in. So I'm just going to go along and draw a line that's pretty much right down the middle of my fabric and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sew a half or a quarter of an inch on the edge here 
and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on the edge here and I'm going to do the French seam which is where you sew it on the outside and then you flip it inside out and you sew it again hiding your your edge your frayed edge so let's go over to the machine and give that a go right now Okay, so I'm going to do a quarter of an inch in because when I actually flip this around, I'll be able to hide this seam, this quarter inch seam um, in my French seam. So you'll see how that works. So you just do a quarter of an inch in from the side. You can zigzag this a quarter of an inch as well if you don't like all the frays that are here and that's fine as well, but just a quarter of an inch. So here we go. I'm using um, an 80... 12 uh, needle and I'm using full cotton thread so that everything is 100% cotton if that helps. I also tack at the beginning and the end of all of my lines that I'm going to be doing and I also have my sewing machine on the tightest stitch that I could possibly do on mine. So I think mine's set to a 12 which means um, that it's gonna be the smallest stitch that I can offer it on my machine. Okay, next you should have um, your quarter inch seams. You should have your quarter inch seams along the edge and you should have an opening at one end and you should have almost like a pillowcase where it's just folded at the bottom, it's just folded over. And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna flip your um, bag inside out And you're just going to iron down your seams so that your seams are nice and flat. If you have any pieces of thread, just get rid of those. Make sure that your corners are out. And here we go. We're just going to iron down our edges. So that that seam is right at the edge. So see how it wants to pop in there? See how it kind of tucks in? Let me move you a little bit closer. How it wants to tuck in. I just grab that seam, pull it out. You can put your hand in there too or have something to push it out, but that's what you're going to do. And you just iron that seam right down all the way to the end there we go and then you're going to do the same with the other side so now that you have your seam kind of nested inside of the bag what i'm going to do is either sew about a half an inch or um, three-eighths of an inch uh, in from the edge of my fabric so here we go Okay, one side done. Now we're going to do the other side. Okay, now that we have our bag completely sewn together, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way down the center seam that we did. Now, we can't sew right to the end because we have to make a seam to close up the bag on this side. So what I've done is I've measured about a full inch and I'm taking my marker, my friction marker. Now these friction markers are great because they can just iron out. You won't see them in the end. So I am going to take this, make a little line, which you can see is there. And that is what I'm going to sew up to. Now, if you're making more than two channels, you're going to make four channels or whatever um, to stuff. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure each one of those channels inside of the bag, it's going to be about an inch from the edge that you stop sewing. So right now, if you want smaller channels, smaller pockets, maybe you want four here and not such a big pocket, you can do um, like a two and a half inch section on either side. Remember mine are five. And so, um, you'll just draw another line here and another line here, but each one of those lines you're going to sew to one inch from the edge. So let's do that now. 
So once I get to my end line there, I'm gonna actually tack back and that's where I'm going to stop. So now we should have two channels, should be one here and one here, equal lengths. Um, you can see by the inside that I've got the stitch down the middle. And what I wanna do now is just iron out my seams so that they're nice and um, crisp and they're not kind of tucking in. And I also want to iron that um, that purple line that I drew on here. I want to take that and completely get that gone so that you can't see that anymore. Next what I'm going to do is I am going to actually draw on my bag exactly five inches all the way up to the top. So here we go. So again, another friction pen. I'm just going to draw straight on the bag so I know where my lines are going to be. Okay, so there we are at the very top. And you notice I have exactly one inch left right where my, my stitch stops right there. And so that's perfect. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to fill each one of these tubes and we're going to sew. And then we're going to fill a tube and then sew and then fill a tube and sew and then fill the tube up to here and sew. So let's get to that right now. This is my ice cream container. I actually have a pill bottle that I use to fill um, my, my bags up with. Now you can get these from anybody, anybody that has medications that they need to um, th throw these little containers out they're fantastic and so I've just snagged a whole bunch from a few people that I know and I have them in my room ready to use for disposing of needles or dull blades or anything that I need to throw out that might be sharp I put in these put the lid on and I throw them out in this so what you're gonna do in this bag is you're going to fill with two of these, so really one of these is probably about a quarter of a cup. You're gonna fill it with um, two of those, so that's essentially a half a cup of um, filler. And when you put your hand on here, you can feel that that's probably half the size of your square, and that's really what you want, only half of it filled. Because if it's full, it's gonna to be too heavy and not, it's gonna be stiff. It's gonna feel tight around you. So you only want each square about half full. So if you make smaller squares, then just kind of guess and look. I know that for me, two of these containers, which is probably about a half a cup, is probably all I need. Now, these might not be equal even at the bottom. They actually are pretty good, but they don't have to be um, perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that all of our seed is right to the bottom. And I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew across. Okay, to sew up these sections, what I'm going to do is take a ruler and I'm going to pull all of my fill over to the one side, making sure that there's no fill along this stitch line where my needle will go. I don't want my needle to hit anything along the way. It'll stop, it'll jam, you don't want that. I'll do this for every section in my um, mat, except for the very last one where the opening is. Okay, so I have this section, this section, this section, all filled up, but now we're at our end section. What do we do here? Well, it's very simple. You're gonna do the same thing that you did for the last two. You're gonna fill these up the way that you did the other ones, the same amount. So again, I do two cups, sorry, not two cups, <laughs> two of my pill cups that I have here. Um, and so that's really about a half to, yeah, half cup, half cup to three quarters of a cup whatever you think you want to put in there. Oops. It's, usually I do this in a tub so that all these little bits don't go all over the place. Okay. So now you can see there's my stuffing. This is where it gets a little dicey. What you're going to want is pins 
But uh, I like are these wonder clips, which are wonderful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is you've left yourself a little bit of seam allowance here, which is really nice. You're gonna take your edge and you're going to flip it down to make yourself a seam. And you can iron that if you want beforehand, before you fill it. I don't need to do that. I feel like I can just do that with my hands, try to line it up as best I can. It might not be perfectly straight, but it, it's probably not too bad. And I have enough to flip a quarter of an inch, because remember, this is an inch wide. I have enough to make at least a half of an inch of a seam there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with my wonder clips and I'm going to try and make sure that they're right together so that when I'm working on this, none of the filling falls out. So you can put pins along here. It does the exact same trick. Just make sure your pins are nice and close. I find the Wonder Clips work really nicely because it just contains the bag perfectly. Now, when I'm putting these on, I also want to make sure um, that none of the stuffing actually comes out, none of the filling. So I'm going to go ahead and put these right across my seam and that's another reason why you don't fill it too full because if you fill it full this is really hard to do when stuffing is right up at the top or the filling is right close to the top so I do have bigger ones but I find the smaller ones seem to work better because they just close everything up perfectly okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew back tack here. sew all the way across, taking each one out. It's going to be a slow process, but it will work. And you're doing the same thing. You're just sewing it closed right along that blue line that you drew here. If you can see underneath this blue line, you're going to do it here. And if you want, you can even do another stitch right close to the edge, which I typically do to make sure that that seam is double um, reinforced. So that's what I'll do. I'll go to the machine now and I'm going to sew along the blue line and right close to the edge. And I'll show you what that looks like after. So we finished closing the last hem of our bag and you can see I've done Right where that blue line was, I sewed the bottom. And then I did a secondary stitch along the top. They're probably about, what, a quarter of an inch apart from each other. But just right along that edge, I wanted to close that up so that it was double sealed. And so then that becomes our bag. And there it is. I ironed out all the lines that we drew on the bag so that we didn't have um, any marks that you could see. and. The bag smells amazing. It smells so pretty. It smells like lavender, which lavender helps you sleep. So if you did need this for bedtime, um, this is a really nice thing to bring to bed, especially for your feet. If they're cold, it's really, really nice. So heat it up, give it a try, and I hope you enjoyed our tutorial today.